Big Mac Macintosh, but recently he has been Doctor Who's. So, and today he's joining us for the Grand Brody Gals Doctor Who Invasion. So raise your sonic screwdriver high as we welcome Doctor Who's himself, Mr. Peter Dale! Hi. Hi. Hey. Big McKay. Hey. Hey. Hello. How's everybody? Great. Great. Good. Fantastic. Is that over? <laughs> <What's that? laughs> Thank you for joining the Grand Prix Wedding Gala. My pleasure. My pleasure. It's lovely to be here. Now, is the three glasses a reference to the doctor? Yes. Just off the yeah. second chair. Just second chair. I put, uh, I put all, there's a little cutie mark on the side there. Selling these at my autographs table. <laughs> For I, forgot, I forgot I had them on. <laughs> oh, wow, you guys are so real. <laughs> it's like you're, I can almost touch you. It's cool. <laughs> now, speaking of that's, Doctor... That's going to make me <laughs> Now, speaking of Doctor Who's, uh, you obviously voiced it in the yes. Sense of Life episode. Yes. Did you actually watch the show in preparation for auditioning for the character? Um, the Doctor Who show? Not for the Slice of Life episode. Well, I, like Doctor Who's. well I didn't watch the Slice of Life episode before. Then, if that's, what watch Doctor Who? <laughs> that's what I was oh. clarifying. Um, I didn't watch Doctor Who to prepare for the Slice of Life episode. I watched Doctor Who because I like Doctor Who. Oh, you're actually a legit fan. Uh, well, I've been watching it since the 70s. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, I, I'm, I'm telling you. Um, so, yeah, no, I was thrilled when it came back, and I thought Eccleston was a great choice for the Doctor, and so I was fully in right away, and, uh, and I've been enjoying it ever since. So, when they came to me and said, uh, we want you to play the Doctor in this 100th episode, I was like, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Now, you also do uh, quite a lot of incidental voices on the show. Yeah. Is it rather difficult to actually come up with a character there on the spot? Well, that's part of your job, right? Uh, so you get good at it. It's, um, a lot of the time you'll come up with a character and you think, oh, this is gold, this is perfect, this is exactly what this is. You, and you get, in most scenarios, you get at least overnight to, to you know, they'll tell you you're going to be this, and you go, all right, well, I will read it and determine a voice. The number of times you come into the studio with the voice that you want, thinking, yeah, this is going to be great with this guy, I'm going to do this with this guy, and they go, mm, no. <laughs> Could you do, what else have you got? And that's the only, <laughs> that's the only question they give you. They're not like, could you try it this way or that way? It's just, what else? And you have to go, well, what else is appropriate? Let me think. And you have to make a choice on the spot, and they'll steer you to it, but, uh, yeah. Now, in the episode, uh, uh, what was it? Apples to the core? No, that was the name of the song. But, uh, but basically, your character had a bit of a philosophical sorry, uh, conversation off screen about parachutes. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, does it ever kind of bother you when stuff like that happens off screen? It's like, oh, come on, let me say something. No, I mean, it. I, I did get to say stuff. I got to say what was in the script to say. Right? <laughs> so, for me as an actor, as I'm not Big Macintosh, so it's not like I miss out on saying something, right? I say what the script says to say. Uh, so I never felt like that. I never felt like, oh, gee, what could he possibly be talking about? All I need to know is that it's something philosophical. And, and what, what is that like? Uh, so I could put the proper emphasis on the words I do have. Um, so no, it never, it never bothers me. I'm, I, I thought the joke was fun, right? And so I wanted to serve that joke. I actually just realized, your character essentially talks when the fans aren't looking. Mm -hmm. Everyone don't blink. Yeah. <laughs> blink and you're dead. <laughs> a fellow Hoobie told me that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and open the floor for you guys here. Come on, you got a question for Big Mac? Go ahead and line up right here. Okay. Why don't you just run around to find them instead of making them get out of their chairs? It's not like there's so many people here going to miss anyone. Okay, why don't you guys line up instead? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, what's your name? Jared. Jared? Go ahead and ask Big Mac. Do you ever have trouble keeping all these separate characters as separate characters? Um, not in the sense of 
uh, keeping the characters themselves distinct. Sometimes your voice uh, bleeds from one character to the other character, and so then you have to do some work to... Uh, a lot of the time, too, which I find kind of funny, is they'll, I'll make an offer on My Little Pony for a, for a character that kind of goes up in here and does that kind of thing, and they'll, they'll say, it's too much like Sunil from Little's Pet Shops. Can you stay away from that? And I think, yeah, but... This is a totally different show. Who cares? <laughs> like, I could just do Sunil. No, it's like a you voice that no, it's, it's not from this universe. It doesn't matter. So that kind of thing happens, but which is tricky because then you know you sort of establish yourself on one show in one place and on another show in another place, and then they say don't let those two things collide in a third place. When you've only got one set of vocal cords. Yeah. Well, yeah. Somehow I've managed it though. I think on 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 Lilith's pet shop, I think I ended up doing almost seventy different voices. Oh, so, wow. Uh, and I'm, and I'm, I think it's like 37 on ponies or something now, something like that, anyway. 30 something. So. Do you remember the psych episode that you were in? Yeah, I do remember the psych episode I was in. <laughs> I hated you in that episode. Did you? <laughs> Why? Was that, Why? Like, what happened? Like my bad acting or just didn't no, like the, the character? The character was just a horrible person. Yeah, he was not very nice. I, I loved playing him. I really wanted him to come back over and over again. Was he killed or something? No, he was. Uh, it, I thought the episode was quite funny. He was um, the the two younger cops um, were trying to outcompete one another mm -hmm. for for information or to solve the crime or whatever it was, and so they each like got quite heated with each other and said, "Well, I've got an informant that's going to you know beat you," and she goes, "Well, I have an informant that's going to beat your informant," and they both show up at my place, and I'm this sleazy gas station guy. <laughs> And what I enjoyed about it was he was just like, could you guys like sort out your thing, man? Because uh, I don't want anyone else finding out that I'm the informant. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. Funny. Um, hey, Peter, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good, Red. How are you doing? Um, I have uh, two questions. Uh, sure. A smaller one first. Um, do you ever do your voice to like uh, the, like little kids and they kind of look up and like look for the character? I, I got a couple stories about that because oh, yes. um, the, the thing that you learn fairly early on uh, with kids is they don't really think about the human being that makes the voice. They just watch the show and see the character. I remember being at a party, a friend's, friend's party, and uh, there was this little girl there who was about my daughter's age, and so I was getting along with her quite well, and I was able to you know, have fun, make faces, communicate, and we were giggling with each other at the party. Uh, and then my, her mother, my friend's friend, who I didn't know, found out that I was Big Macintosh on My Little Pony. The daughter, apparently, was a really big fan of My Little Pony. And so she kept saying to the kid, ah, he's, he's Big Macintosh, he's Big Macintosh, he should, you know, whatever. And they finally coaxed me to do the voice, and so I did the voice, and the kid just went. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, hid behind her mother all of a sudden, and then, and then whispered to her mother, went, Mommy, why isn't he a pony? <laughs> But that was the end of that was the end of my, uh, the sad part for me was that it was the end of my relationship with the kid. Right? And she after that point she just didn't she couldn't so I was two different ideas. Mind right? blown. Right? A little bit. So that's that's one example. So I try not to do my voice for kids in the context of I am this thing. But then I also have another story which is almost the opposite at uh, Nightmare Nights when I was there a couple of years ago in Dallas. Uh, it was just after uh, Lilith's Pet Shop aired for the first time, and I came out and there was this kid dressed as one of the Pet Shop characters, a little girl. And so I started doing the Sunil voice, and she tucked on her dad's coat immediately and turned around and went, do it again, do it again for the dad. So I did it again for the dad, and the dad was like, oh, you know, figured it out who I am. And then the kid says to me, now do Zoe. <laughs> I <laughs> just thought I could do the impressions of all the characters. I just thought I was good at it. Yeah. This is a really good Sunil. You should hear it. <laughs> but, um, my second question, um, uh, I, I'm actually just finding out that you're a big, you, you know, huge Doctor Who fan. Mm. Um, did you model the, the Doctor, um, you know, Pony, after any particular Doctor? Uh, sort of. Um, here's the thing, and I don't, like, Sometimes I tell this story and it, like people go, that's great! And sometimes I tell this story and people feel burned. So no. I apologize in advance if you're in the latter camp. Um, David Tennant was in Vancouver when we recorded that episode shooting uh, Grace Point, I guess it was called, something like that. 
Uh, and so they were trying to get me. Uh, so when they offered me the job, they said, we would like you to come in and record it, but I want you to know we're still courting David Tennant, and so there's this possibility that we won't use you. But we need somebody to put down a temp track. So I went home thinking, well, if the only other person that can have this job is David Tennant, I better sound as much like David Tennant as I can. And I'm not really an, impression, an impressionist. That's one kind of voice actor that's not the kind I am. Um, but I watched a bunch of David Tennant episodes at that point and tried to put in David Tennant-isms, uh, and including into the script itself, because uh, Mitch had written in a lot of like the L and Z and stuff like that. It wasn't written, I just added them, because I knew that that's, that was Tennant-y. So, and I guess they didn't get him. I don't know why not. I don't know if he said no. I don't know if he cost too much. I don't know. Scheduling. Scheduling. I don't know. I don't know. A quick thing. On the yeah. LMZ, mm -hmm. they actually had in the Korean dub, I don't know if you know this, no. in the Korean dub, they had the doctor say LMZ in one of the in one of the episodes way before the 100th episode. Oh, really? Yep. It's, 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 there's, it's You're just going to go with my catchphrases, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I think it's somewhere on YouTube. Um, I think oh, it's the Korean dub. But yeah, they they put it in there way early. They were they were ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah. But that is so awesome that you try to make it like David Tennant. That's yeah, well, my I thought, favorite doctor. Yeah. I thought I thought I have no choice. I thought if I show up and, and do a, a John Pertwee, then you know, they're they're going to be like, no, it's okay, I guess. But I feel like I feel like Tennant is kind of. He may not be everybody's favorite doctor, but everybody knows his doctor, right? right? Mm -hmm. People think of him when they think of Doctor Who, even if Matt Smith might be their favorite. The tenant is iconic. So it made sense, the 3D glasses and all that. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, thanks. All right, what's your name? Tyson. Tyson, Tyson. ask away. Uh, um, it's less of a question, more of a request. Uh-huh. Because um, I'm also a fan of King of the Hill. Pardon me, say it again? Uh, I'm also a fan of King of the Hill. Okay, yeah. So, so I was wondering if in your in your Big Mac voice, you could say, I sell apples and apple accessories. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sell apples and apple accessories. <laughs> That was on YouTube. When Did you, I? Yeah, okay. yeah. When I was researching you know, questions to ask you, you actually uh, went through the vendors hall and. Uh, oh yeah, at, at uh, Evergreen. Yeah, I yeah, I remember that. And, and you you said the exact line. No one requested it, but. <laughs> I think yeah, I think that sort of uh, the the similarity hadn't occurred to me until quite recently at that point, and uh, and so as soon as it did, I was like, that's oh, fun. Let's <laughs> play with that. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right. All right. Hello, Mr. Peter. Hello, Mr. Cooper. Cooper. Yeah, uh, he's the name of my boss at work. It's funny. Anyways, uh, in season five episode, Do Princesses Dream of Magic Sheep, if I remember correctly, you voiced a bunch of singing flowers? Yes, the, sun, the, the creepy sunflowers. Yeah. <laughs> what was that experience like when you were told you had to do that? Uh, yeah, that one, that one was just be as creepy as you can. <laughs> be, as, be as cute and creepy as you possibly can. And, you know, right from the get-go, I mean, they'll do a lot in the machine as well, and they, so they pitched me up a little bit. I think my version of it in real life probably sounded something like... I love you! <laughs> you love me! But, and then they, and then they made it even worse. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thank you. All right. Next. Hi, Peter. Hello. Um, and I don't know if you remember, but you talked to me on um, Twitter that one time. That's possible. When, when I asked you about um, the audio voice acting, if it counts, and you said it doesn't. But, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, now, I have a question. It's about Little's Pet Shop. Sure. And it was in Super Sunil. Okay. It was that time when uh, Penny Ling and Sunil were in Blight's room. Mm -hmm. And then Sunil jumps through the... What, that window? Mm -hmm. Was it at that time Penny Ling was attempting to kill Sunil? I don't think she was trying to kill him. I think she was trying to save him. That's what just happened then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, what's your name? Ethan. Ethan, go ahead Ethan, and ask Big Matt. Um, so in the episode, No Second Francis, how did it feel to actually speak words other than Yup, and nope, as Big Mac, and in such a fast pit. It's well, it felt about the same as it felt to say words other than yup and nope in season one, episode four, when I first appeared, and did oh, yeah. not say yup and nope. Right. Yeah. Oh. 
But what's I, the, the, but what's the thing the, that people forget about Big Mac, I think, is that because he ends up saying yes and no a lot, he didn't start saying that. His first line in the show was something like, uh, "Too big for you to too, handle." Too, on. too much for you to handle on your own. That's just what I'm afraid of. He said all those kinds of things before yep and no ever materialized. So, I mean, I know that Warren always wanted him just to say yep and no. He thought that was really fun, and I thought so too. I think Hasbro was a bit concerned that he would become uh, a bit too monotone doing just that. Um, but I think over the over the years that joke does expire, so I'm glad that they're having him say more things now, for sure. And as an like as an actor, I like it. As a as a writer, as a as somebody under, that understands the, the construct of that joke, the yuck no joke. Um, it's sort of like you know I don't know if any of you have ever seen the show Home Improvement, but it's like the guy over the fence and you never you never see his face, right? Wilson. That Wilson, yeah. The, that's the volleyball. Um, but like that, you, you can either let that character grow out of that gag, or you have to be absolutely rigid with that gag. And because they didn't start with the rigidity of the gag in season one, episode four, they started with other things. So Yup and Nope was, would never had the rigidity of the guy over the fence. And so there was always room for him to, to go out of it, and the rigidity would have seemed dull. Whereas if they'd stuck with it right from the start, which I think was Lauren's idea, and I think that would have been really fun, then he would never have been permitted to say anything besides the upper note. And that itself would have been sustainable. But because it was broken on the first line, you can't do it. Does that make sense? So for, for me, like it, it, you know, it, was, it was just another day at the office. Yeah. Okay. Was at least a little difficult to actually have this talk so fast and be so, uh... Verbose? Articulate? Articulate, yeah. Enunciating? <laughs> Something I struggle yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know if you know, but I, 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 I chatter. Don't know if you've gathered that from listening to me so far today, but I ramble. So, uh, I, I think it came naturally. <laughs> Just put more of my own blah 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 into the... <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Yeah. The black level. Yeah. All right, what's your name? Joshua. 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 Hi. That's Big Mac. Um, can I get like a, one qu first question and the second one can be like a quick one? Sure. Okay. I don't. I think ultimately everyone's gonna get a chance. It's not, <laughs> it's not like it's a giant crowd. So. Okay. So my first question is, um, how was your like experience in the episode where um, uh, you're gonna get to play as like, uh, we play as like a female. As Big Orchard, Orchard yeah. Blossom? Yeah, Orchard Blossom. That was fun. Um, yeah, what was like your experience and like, because that was probably like one of the episodes where you like spoke the most. Uh, yeah, it was certainly when Big Mac spoke the most. Um, I thought that was really fun and I thought that was, uh, um, I, for me I thought it was quite a, quite a smart way to take that gag on. Uh, because it was a way of saying, uh, it was a way to give the character permission to speak. Uh, which I thought was lovely, um, and I liked that. I liked that nobody thought he was a joke. Everybody just kind of went, "Well, we'll see how this plays out." <laughs> <laughs> which, which I think is a great message, honestly, <coughs> you know, to let somebody express themselves and just say, "See how that plays out. Let's go. Let's support them." That was, you know, his his cross dressing was never a a problem for anyone, and I liked that. Um, but, and I like that the, you know, what, what had him get his comeuppance was just his brutishness, his, his hard work and his, his determination, which are just character traits. I like that's what screwed him up. In terms of the boys, though, uh, the real challenge was figuring out how to do his voice as a female voice. Because I can go quite a bit higher in my register than I think he could probably do in his. So it was a question of sort of because my temptation might be to go all the way up here, you know, myself. But I don't think he would necessarily do that. Uh, so <laughs> I sort of scaled myself down and then came back up and found that little range for him. Um, because I thought that would be more realistic. It was fun. I mean, it was a, it was a challenge, but it was really fun. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to answer it. <laughs> now, you have a second question, Mom? Yeah. Um, can you do Dr. Moon's voice? Oh, yes. Wow. Why not? Hello. How's <laughs> he? <laughs> he gets the great weathering stallions. Great weathering stallions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bravo, sir. All right, what's your name? Uh, Jacob. Jacob, Bigger. hi. That's the way. All right, first things first, fourth and tenth doctor, my favorite. So, All right. Awesome. Good, good. Uh, first things first, and second question is, first question, what is, got, what got you into voice acting? Uh, I, I wanted to, to be an actor, more specifically than a voice actor, and, um, and voice acting just kind of happened because uh, the agent I had at first was, a, was a, both a voice actor, both a camera agent and a voice agent. Um, so I, I was just going to auditions for whatever, and uh, the voice acting just kind of took off where the camera acting kind of tripled along. So um, that's how it happened. I think I think I did you know, I did a lot of sketch comedy, live sketch comedy, and that helped me to kind of make bold character choices very quickly, uh, which you need to be able to, to voice act. So uh, that that probably served me very well. But in terms of you know how I got into it, it just kind of I went to some audition and it worked. Awesome. <laughs> All right, thank you. What's your name? Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, Bruce, that's good. So, uh, are you uh, familiar with the uh, with John Favreau, the director? Yep. Yeah. You ever seen the movie Chef? No. Are you sure? I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. We should probably get on the. All right, I will. <laughs> That's it. All right. <laughs> What's your name? Joey. Joey, ask away. All right. So my question is for the episode where uh, Starlight Wimmer accidentally uh, spells you yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did they ask for insight on that, like what they might, what he might say in that? No, it was written. Was it actually written? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Look who's back. <laughs> What's your next question? Well, I have actually three small, fun questions. Yeah. I'm sure I'll take about half an hour to answer them. Okay. Yeah. Small. Yeah, you are. Especially my feet. <laughs> um, what does great wickering stallions mean? Uh, wickering is a, a horse term for, I asked Mitch, what did he tell me? Uh, I think it's when they, it's, I think it's one of the sounds they make or something. So a great, a great stallion would be a big horse and wickering is making the noise. I think it's, it's the noise, someone can Google it. But it's, it's either making the noise or I feel like maybe it's Losing their mane. I'm not sure. I'm not a horse guy. <laughs> it just meant it's you know it's just a horse thing. Hmm. Uh, other one is um, can you give us the line that you said in No Second Prances, the um, the really articulate line? Do you remember it? Uh, is that the one that he was just talking about? Where it, yeah, yeah, he was talking really fast. I don't and remember. I don't remember. Oh. I know it's, it's sort of like no 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 not apples articulating. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Was it? It was like uh. Hey, you did something! Whoa! I'm talking so much, and I'm so articulate. <laughs> I thought, oh no, I'm gonna say it. There, see? Yeah. <laughs> I remember like 80% of that. That's all good. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, well, my last one is, can you, um, can you give us uh, a little bit of uh, deep Big Mac philosophical wisdom? Oh. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what's your name? Roger Estrada. What's with the mask? Oh. Wear the mask? Wear the mask. Okay, wear the mask. Yeah, go ahead, wear it. I'm curious. Express the mask away, man. Uh, what would you like to see if they ever decided to make a, a, a Big Mac episode? Oh, oh well. I, you know, there was that comic of him trying to get across town with his inner monologue. That was awesome. Yeah! And, and I always have looked at that and thought that would be a terrific episode. I think that would be great. But uh, beyond that, I mean, you know, I, I've always taken the view that, that he's got a really rich inner life. I really have. And, uh, and so I'd just like to see that explored in some way. I think that would be fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Do the Navigator! Yeah. Alright, what's your name? What? <laughs> Alright, okay. Justin. Justin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love your shirt. Okay. So... <laughs> okay. okay. I, I don't care when I ask my question. <laughs> I really, really love my shirt too. But, um, so, after a few years or so of teasing with the shirt, well... Can you just talk into the mic a little bit more, maybe? Well, after two... 
after a few years of teasers in Bashir, then we get a part of break, breakers. What a, so, what do you think will have happened there? I don't, I don't, I don't get quite the question. Breakers with Mark Goldstein? No. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, mm, you know, I don't really know. I, I, I feel like um, most of these characters' relationships aren't, you know, like, what you, you guys as a community want to do with him and his relationships is one thing, but I feel like what happens actually in the show is just what you see. So he had a cute little interchange with Marble Pie. And he had a he had an unfortunate incident in a pit with Cheerilee, uh. and and that's it. For me, that's it because that's all that I've ever been given to say. Okay. So I don't I don't really have any. I don't. I don't feel like either of those things is a relationship because mm -hmm. all they are are exchanges. They're no more significant to me than you know saying hello to Mr. Cake in the street. <laughs> all right, one more. Mm -hmm. um, what What can we look forward to in the Dungeons and Dragons? I cannot answer that question oh. for reasons of contract. Is Ooh. there a um, in here. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, the moose. Thank you. Mm -hmm. nah, you. Are you the moose? No, it's a, that's a callback to a... Like, I know, that's one. <laughs> Alright, what's your name? Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Daniel Asquay. Alright, so I've been to Nicole's panel this morning, and uh -huh. I know that you two had a blast recording the whole um, Love Poison talk yeah. between yeah, you and Mark's and Doomsday. But I'm kind of wondering, what, did you have more fun doing that scene or the entirety of Orchard Blossom? Because it seems like the, those two roles, those two moments in the show were really the most comedic for me. Just so uh, For me, it was doing Orchard Blossom. I mean, it's, it's, I, I mean, it's entertaining in a different way. I mean, doing the silly voices, the silly words. I mean, Nicole and I were across from each other, if I remember it right. And it, we just got to a point we couldn't really look at each other because it was just too stupid. Um, we were making each other laugh. We make each other laugh on the best of days. So, on the best of days, on the worst of days, we make each other laugh. Um, so, standing across from each other and making these goofy words was funny and, and fun. And then it made it, you know, it was the challenge in that episode was to get through it without losing our professionalism. Um, but Orchard Blossom ultimately was more fun for me because it was it was a journey, and uh, actors like to play journeys, right? Yeah. And, uh, and it was a journey I really enjoyed. It's a journey that meant something to me personally, and it, you know, uh, and part of that is because of the the monologue at the end. A lot of it was because he got to the, the most significant part of him talking in all of the series for me is that monologue at the end when he opens up because that, you know, that means something uh, really broadly. And uh, so for me, getting to that uh, was really fun. And, and I had to be Orchard Blossom to get to it, and I liked that a lot. I thought, again, I thought that was one of the, one of the best pieces of writing, I think. In I, I agree here. completely. And one quick thing, um, since in the episode Slice of Light, Dr. Hooves has this irrational fear of bowling, Mm -hmm. How are you bowling in real life? Are you a good bowler? Do you like it? Dude, you I it? was in the Young Bowlers of Canada when I was uh, a teenager. So, uh, I mean, it's five pin. And you're welling a bowler. Uh, yeah, I'm wearing a bowler. Uh, so I don't, I don't have a fear of bowling. I, quit. I, I used to be, I used to be reasonably good. Played the tournaments. I got some bowling trophies. Ooh, all right. Yeah. I saw them included. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, here. Hi, what's your name? Jonathan. Jonathan Asquoy. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to rap like I did with Nicole. That's um, good. <laughs> That's not going to go well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how's, like, uh, like your relationship with, like, your quote-unquote sisters, uh, Michelle Krieger and Ashley Ball? Oh, it's great. Yeah. They're both lovely. All um, right. We, we go along just wonderfully. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Name? Besides Martin McFly? <laughs> Same as last name, Joshua. I don't know. <laughs> I just screwed. <laughs> oh, okay, so um, I know that today and Sunday you're doing a um, yeah. panel with. Yeah. Them. Yeah. I was just wondering, um, what are you, like, can you give us a little preview of my yeah, voice over workshop? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just something I've never done, I've never tried it before, and I thought uh, this is a good opportunity. I, I, so often when I come to these things, I have people who raise their hand and say, I want to be a voice actor and whatever. So I thought it would be a good idea to host a small workshop where I talk to people about basics of acting, basics of voice acting, record you a little bit doing uh, some scripts that I brought with me, uh, which are actual, some are actual jobs I've done. Most, I think most of them are actual jobs I've done uh, in animation and in radio commercials. Uh, and uh, just take everybody through some step-by-steps of what, what it is that you have to be prepared to do. Um, it's going to be whirlwind and packed because there's, uh, there's a lot of material to get through and only about an hour to do it in. I think I've managed to get them to schedule a little bit of bleed time because I expect we'll go over the hour. Uh, and there's only 10 tickets for each of the sessions, 10 people today and 10 people on Sunday. I think Sunday is already almost sold out, if not sold out. So mm -hmm. if you're interested in that, I get on it. I think it'll be really fun. I think it'll be really, uh, really challenging and interesting. And uh, I really wanted to meet, as I, you know, people are at different stages. Some people have some experience and some people have absolutely none. So I really want to try and meet people where they are and, and, and try to help them, you know, take themselves to the next level with it. Mm -hmm. Does that sound cool? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you haven't bought a ticket, I'd suggest you do it. Oh, I already got my ticket. There you go. Yeah, I'll see you you, there, yeah. Will I see you today or on Sunday? Today. Sweet. All right. Uh, I was supposed to ask this earlier, but I forgot to. So okay. Thank well, you. there's a long line behind you, so we can keep it. <laughs> it's, just, it's just Ray behind you. Forget it. <laughs> okay, now there's a line. I, I, I'm a one-man long line. That's right. I know. Well, it's, you've had more questions than everybody else put together. <laughs> I've got one more. Just one? I'm sure you can it's think of another couple at the time it's your turn. No, it's never just All right. one, but I'll just spit one in. I mean, he does the best. Yeah. All right, uh, Mr. Peter, uh, personal question to you is, uh, first off, you're friends with uh, Ashley Mullen and Michelle Kreber in real life. Are mm -hmm. you friends with any of the writers from the show? Yeah, I'm friends with uh, Mitch, for sure. Yeah. And uh, M.A. Larson? M.A. Larson? Yeah. Let me come here. I quite like Josh and Dave Kolsky as well, and uh, I mean, we, they live in LA, all these guys, and I'm in Vancouver, so it's, we don't get to see each other very often, but when we, when we come to these conventions, it's really great to hang out. I like hanging out with uh, uh, Megan McCarthy, I haven't seen in a long time, but I quite like hanging out with Megan and, uh, and Amy Keating Rogers, too, so. Uh, Alright, and finally, um, I've been asking this to everybody, like I asked Kelly, no, she's not yet, I asked this to Nicole and I asked this to Jason, next. All right. What do you think of the Equestria Girls movies? Uh, I think they're fine. I mean, I think they're a different animal than the Pony Show. They're not quite the same thing. And so I think you can't really judge them as a, as a comparison, right? Because they're, they're got a, they have a different target demographic. They're obviously different character designs. I think it's like a spin-off, you know, in a way, if you think of it like that. I think they're fine. I think they're fun. Okay. The, the first one, though, when we did it, uh, I didn't actually know that they were humans. <laughs> because uh, I got the script, and, like you get, when I get my contracts, when I get my agent calls me and says, okay, you've got a job on My Little Pony this weekend. So he just says, uh, yeah, NLP on Wednesday, whatever time, or whatever day. Uh, and then he'll say either, you're Big Mac, you're an actor, or you're Big Mac, you're a principal. And what that means is, you know, or whatever character. So you're Big Mac. Big Mac, the character, and actor means you have fewer than six lines, and principal means you know more. So when he called me with the Quest Street Girls, he said, yeah, MLP, you're Big Mac, you're an actor. So I just went, okay, I'm just going to flip through and find where it says Big Mac and see if it's complicated, which usually with him it's not. <laughs> it's usually yuck, which in fact it turned out to be. <laughs> so I didn't read it. I just found where it said, yup, I read that little bit of the scene, and I went, yeah, I know how to play that, that's fine, I'll, I don't need the context of the rest of the film. It doesn't help me to know anything else to be able to say, yup, in this one scene. I don't need to know, you know that the school blows up at the end, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, so, no, it would have been better. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't help me. So I didn't read it, and I went to work, and I said, yup, and then they said, oh, you're also this other character who says, whatever the other guy said. It was the drummer or something. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, your dog can talk? Or something like that. Weird. Uh, weird. And I, again, I thought, yeah, I can do that without 
context. I don't need to know anything besides, oh, duck can talk. That's all I needed to know to play that. So I never read it. Time went by, and then I started seeing the leaked images of the human ponies, and I was like, that's not going to be real. <laughs> it's just that. So that's a joke. That's not, that's not happening. So how much was so, the shock was it when you found out it was real? Uh, it was a shock. <laughs> and then, of course, I had to admit to Megan and Rowe that I had to admit that I never read it. Right <laughs> what do you think of your human character design? Uh, I thought it was... Uh, it was fine, I thought. You know, I thought it looked a lot like me, so I'm happy. <laughs> Young, blonde, strapping, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right, Lots thanks. of hair. All right. And we got returns. Hello. I almost tripped again coming up here, because I almost did that twice earlier. Oh, no. Um, I'm sorry if I said it earlier. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, I'm just, the, the point I was trying to make is when she uh, caught him with the fishing rod, uh -huh. and it was pulling back, he kept hitting the, um, the, the wall. Oh, yeah. That's why I made that statement. Uh -huh. It looked like she was trying to kill him. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I know she was trying to save him at all, but that's what I thought she was trying to kill him. No, I, well, I, I think that, you know, I mean, I don't... A lot of what they animate isn't written into the scripts at the time we record them, so I don't always get to see a lot of that stuff. I know that sometimes we record it and they'll say, oh, he gets pulled up by the fishing line and bangs into a few things on the way to the ground, and so we need some him banging into stuff noises, and so I'll go, and, and then the animators will listen to that and decide what it looks like. And so a lot of the time it might be written that he, you know, falls through an awning and hits a car. And so I'll write, whoa, bah! I'll do something like that. But they'll listen to it and decide that that sounds more like something else. And so they'll draw something else. Nice. And also, um, Potter and Sunil would have been the best shipping if they ever did shipping in that. Because that would definitely be a fan shipping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know it's a popular one. And I want to thank you all for all the things that you do with the My Little Pony and Willis Pet Shop. Oh, well, it does thank nothing you. but save lives. And well, thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's, that means a, a, a huge amount to me. Thank you. Back with his 600th question. Yeah, I, can, I can definitely vouch for what she's saying. I mean, uh, just a quick side thing here. Uh, I know when Amy wrote the episode on the, uh, the Crusades of the Lost Mark, that was kind of a tough time for me, and I kind of realized something really deep about myself. So I can say, you know, the work that you do do, it, it does help people out you know, yeah. in a significant yeah. way. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, thank you. That's, I mean, that means everything. That means everything. Yeah. Um, so my, um, yeah, especially the, um, the, the cross-dressing episode, that was a very, very big impact for a lot of people. Yeah, it was an interesting, yes. there was a, a, an interesting reaction to that. There were yeah. sort of three major reactions to it. Two of them yeah. were positive. <laughs> and one of them wasn't. And, yeah, I, just, I, was and I just feel like, you know, I can't... My sister is trans, and so I talked to her a lot about it before uh, I really responded online to things. And she made the very astute observation that there are kind of, if you want to really reduce it, there are two narratives about Big Mac in My Little Pony. There is narrative A, where he is nothing but macho, heart, you know, man's man, traditional male role model who has no variance from that. And then there's the other narrative, which sort of I'm more attuned to, where he's a little bit gender fluid. He doesn't, you know, he's happy to be the princess. He's happy to dress up as Orchard Blossom. He's quite content with all these things. So if you're a part of narrative A and you see him dress up, as a woman, you immediately go back to the long comedy tradition of man dressing as woman equals punchline, which, if you're trans, is an insult. But, if you're part of narrative B, where you see his gender fluidity, and you see that he is just trying to express himself, it becomes a celebration of sin. And so, which again is how I would choose to look at it. And so if you see that second narrative, it becomes this very positive message. But if you can only see the first narrative, it becomes a very insulting message. And so I see that that is true in both cases. Well, I mean, I and all I can do is support what I believe to be the message that I would, would suggest is true, which is the one of, as I said earlier, you support the way someone is presenting themselves. 
I mean, this because episode, that's comfortable for them. Yeah, this episode really strengthened, like uh, I had Kenan that I had for a while, that he is a really shy you know, individual, and it's, it's actually difficult for him to ex express himself. Right. And that when he does this, when he, when he dresses up as a, another uh, character or something, it gives him sort of like, not, Freedom. not necessarily like a mask, but like something to sort of hide himself behind so well, that yeah. he can be another person another, yeah. and really show uh, you know, a completely different side of himself that you'd be you know, too afraid to. Right, you know, right. And I, think, and I think that, you know, in my conversations with Dave Polsky, um, that is exactly what the episode is supposed to be saying. And all the stuff about, you know, historical narratives of comedy versus narratives of, of transgenderism and all that stuff is really uh, secondary to that which is the central message of the episode. He could just as easily be dressing up as a lampshade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. When I first started to, to, to watch a, a Jane Beecher show in mm -hmm. season and one, like there were there were like ten people on the voice to actor roll call list. Yeah. yeah. And now there's so many new faces that just here, like is it, what's it, it like, like a report kicking with these new customers to such a big show? And is there any hazing involved? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think there's any hazing. Most, mostly, uh, the, a lot of the people that, we, that we're welcoming to the cast now, people like Kelly Sheridan, who's reasonably new to it, uh, are old friends of ours, you know, who have worked in our very small circle of voice actors for decades. So it's it's just a way of, you know, you just kind of say, oh, hey, here you are. You're here now. Great. Come on. Let's go play. Um, there's a few new faces, people I don't recognize, but I think there's the, there's a real mutual respect in our community. And if you have got yourself a job on a show, that's hard. And if you've gotten two jobs on the show, that's twice as hard. And so there's a real respect for people who have managed to break through and have come to work. And you just say, hey, good on you. Welcome. Let's go. Thank you. All right. Last one. Oh, crap. I was going to say, do you like pizza? Yes. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, everybody. Now don't, you didn't say anything, we'll talk about it. <laughs>